If you want to bring a guest into your Ecamm Live productions using interview mode, but also want to have them deliver a presentation that's running on their computer, then stick around because this video is for you and it's also for your guest as well. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec and interview mode in Ecamm Live is a really great feature and it's part of the pro level subscription. So there are two levels and uh, pro includes the interview mode and also it includes virtual cameras, which allows you to feed your uh, Ecamm Live output directly into applications like Zoom, Teams or whatever, wherever you would use a uh, camera input. And that combination is really amazing for uh, a number of reasons, really. And it brings me on to why you might want to do what I'm talking about today which is specifically bringing in a guest who is then going to be delivering some sort of content like a presentation or whatever uh, into your production itself so why would you might want why might you want to do that well imagine you're running a virtual conference and you're doing it through zoom and you've got a series of speakers that are all going to be coming up one after another and they're going to be delivering their slides and they're going to be speaking as well and they want to be on screen or perhaps you're just bringing a, a colleague in perhaps you're using it over a zoom call with some potential clients and there's uh, one of you that is sort of running the show as it were and then you've got somebody else that is actually delivering some of the presentation or delivering the content uh, then this is also another use case for that uh, or perhaps you were just making some YouTube videos I want to bring somebody in that's going to deliver a presentation as part of that or part of your live stream or whatever. There are lots of use cases for it and uh, it should become apparent why you might want to do this uh, as we go through the process. Uh, but I want to cover specifically uh, sort of three different parts of this. First of all, the first part of the video will be as the host, what do you need to do in order to get things set up and ready to go so that things all run smoothly. But also speaking of things running smoothly, what do you need to inform your guests to do on their side uh, in order to make sure that things are set up properly from their side so that things run smoothly from that side as well? There's no point you being all prepared and your guests not really sure how to uh, do things or how to get set up. And finally, the last part of the video will be once the things are running, how you actually go about incorporating all of this and bring your guest in and actually go live or, or start recording with your presentation. So that's the sort of agenda for this video. <laughs> so let's get straight on to part one, which is as the get, as the host, what do you need to do to get things set up? So I'll come into demo mode. I'm not going to do a full overview of Ecamm, obviously, because there's plenty of videos on my, uh, my channel all about setups and things like that. Uh, but I will just quickly run through what I've got open. So I've got my uh, scenes tab open, which is all the different uh, scenes that I've got in my production. I've got overlays, which are all the different sort of elements within those scenes. I've also got the the uh, camera effects panel which allows me to make some changes to uh, my picture quality and things like that or add green screen I'm using a fake background by the way <laughs> uh, so there's uh, there's that as well and then over here on the uh, right hand side I've got my interview mode window as well there is other windows that you can have open but I've just kept all those shut so that we don't get confused these are the four windows that I am going to be using for the purposes of this demonstration <laughs> So uh, first of all, uh, I mentioned that interview mode is a pro feature. You also have to make sure that it is in fact activated and turned on. So uh, when you've got the uh, the window open, by the way, I should just say, when you've got the Ecamm Live window open, you can come over to here to activate. This one is the overlays. Uh, this one down here with two people is the uh, the. Uh, interview mode window. This one with a magic wand is the camera effect because you can perform magic tricks with it. <laughs> uh, and then we've also got the, uh, what have we got? The scenes window as well, which is just over at this top corner. You can also access these by going into window uh, and then selecting them from here as well. As you can see, there are quite a few more other windows, but like I say, I've just kept those shut for uh, uh, clarity. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene first of all and as if by magic I've actually already got it started. <laughs> there we go. Now what we're going to do with this scene is we're going to build out a scene where we've basically got the uh, the, the guest and the host together and also the uh, the slides that the guest is going to be presenting. So I'm going to start by coming over to my overlays uh, window and then right down at the bottom I'm going to click this little one with a camera uh, and that is going to give me a new camera overlay. So uh, then this can be resized, moved around and if I just come out of demo mode for a moment you can see that whatever I do with this uh, image in that little uh, window is what you will see on the output as well. So we're going to basically now sort of design a layout that uh, is, is 
works well with having two guests or sorry a guest and a host and then their slides so let's come back into demo mode uh, now how would we do this and get this all nicely proportioned let me think if only there were a free template that you could get somewhere that would help you with this well fortunately there is and you can download it from my website i'll leave a link in the description below and this template that i've created is basically just an image uh, i'll tell you how to use it at the download page but basically it is just a, uh, a grid that you can then use to align all of your little objects on the screen so i've lined this up with the top corner uh, I'm just going to change the aspect ratio. I think this would be a bit big and wide to uh, fit in the screen sharing later. So I'll come over to the little pencil icon here, going to click on that. And then here we can change the shape. Incidentally, I am using Ecamm Live version 3.9. Did I mention that already? I don't know if I did, but if I didn't, <laughs> I'm mentioning it now. And I made a video all about it and I'll leave it in the top corner. And uh, basically with this version as well, you can add sort of rounded corners as well. Uh, and then also you can change the uh, the border size, the border width as well of these uh, this camera overlay so I'll just uh, put that to about there uh, and by the way this is one of the game-changing <laughs> it really is a game-changing feature of Ecamm Live because it means that you no longer need to look at doing uh, graphical overlays or things like that to make these borders you can just do it all within Ecamm Live and I absolutely love it <laughs> in case you couldn't tell uh, so if you come up to the uh, shape though this is what we're actually here to do uh, I'll come up to the shape uh, and then I'm going to change this to be a custom shape and then if I just drag the corner now what I can do is let's make this a quarter of the width and a half of the height by the way this uh, grid pattern is uh, basically just splitting the, the scene up into the white lines are quarters and the halves uh, quarter and a half and then the uh, the red lines are um, thirds and then there's also a couple here dotted lines for uh, basically eighths or sixths <laughs> uh, and this just basically gives me a bit of versatility in terms of where I can place things and the different sizes that I might need things but allows me to line them up perfectly and you'll notice that the lines aren't exact sort of splits uh, they have got these little gaps between them which basically gives me a little buffer and you'll see what I mean if I want to now add in my uh, my guest uh, camera overlay I can just hold down option and drag and that will be exactly the same size and you can see that when I line it up with my little grid pattern then uh, now everything's all neatly aligned and if I just toggle that grid off for the moment you can see that we've got uh, two nicely positioned boxes there but at the moment they are showing exactly the same thing so I'll pop the grid back uh, and uh, make sure the interview mode is switched on uh, and then when I come into the uh, camera overlay and click on the little pencil to edit it uh, what I can also do in here is change the camera now if you've got multiple cameras plugged in they will all appear in here and you can se select which one but if you've got interview mode toggled on then you can also assign guest one two three or four because you can have up to four guests in interview mode so I'm going to make this one guest number one and obviously there's no one on the on the uh, the call at the moment uh, but when they do they will magically appear in here now we also need to add in a space for their presentation where they're going to be sharing their screen now you could be forgiven for thinking that this would be done by using the uh, screen share overlay which is a new feature in Ecamm Live version 3.9 but that applies to sharing your own screen as the host when you are bringing in a guest and they are sharing their screen over interview mode it actually comes in as another camera overlay rather than a screen share overlay so what we need to do is assign uh, a new overlay for specifically that use so I'm going to hold down the option and I'm going to drag this again uh, over here and then we also probably want to change the aspect ratio of this because it didn't look right for a presentation so I'll click the pencil again and I'll change the shape to be a widescreen like that uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the bottom corner and I'm going to drag that out to uh, fill the screen or fill the width rather and you can see that that's all nicely lined up with the grid and then we'll just just toggle that grid off now uh, like that and then now we've got a nice little space for um, comments in the bottom if you are doing this live if you're not doing it live maybe it's just going straight into zoom or something like that and you don't have to worry about comments then perhaps we could just uh, hold down the option key sorry hold down the uh, the shift key we'll just lock it in the either vertical or horizontal axis so now that's going to be right Let's keep the uh, the vertical position or the horizontal position the same and then I'll just move it down and you can see that as I move it into the center that little blue line appears with Ecamm to signify that it is centered so now I think that looks quite nice as a scene so we've got the place for their uh, slides here we've got the place for the guest above and the host below what I do need to do is I just need to change this assignment from uh, the camera from guest one to guest two 
uh, just like that. So uh, that's basically going to be obviously me, the host, uh, and then the guest will be in this position, guest number one, uh, and then the guest's slides will actually be in this one, which is currently showing as guest number two. This will all make a lot of sense uh, later when I've actually gone through the process of setting it all up. A couple of things that you might want to look at in terms of setting up interview mode as well. Uh, one to look for is if I click on the cog wheel here and then we go into the interview settings, um, there's some settings here whether when somebody rings, when somebody clicks the link to join, does it play a little ring chime, which I have it doing. Do you want it to also auto answer guests? Probably best not if you shared the link and other people have it, then you don't want people to just automatically come straight in. Uh, do you want to send them to a green room? I'd recommend that. We'll see what's going to happen with that in a moment. Uh, and then also this one, lower music and movie sound for guests when in off-air audio mode. So that's basically if you are doing a production where you've got other scenes going, uh, where they're not actually on the scene and there's maybe music playing or intro or something like that, you want to lower that music just so that you can still talk with them back and forth even though it's not actually going out in the production. So that's what that one is. The other one that you might want to look at is the guest view. Uh, which is basically what they are going to see. Now, I would recommend having this as broadcast, which means the guest on their side will see whatever is going out live to uh, to everyone else or to the recording or whatever. Um, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm actually going to change this to be host camera just because it will save this sort of like infinite loop that would otherwise happen because I'm basically sharing the screen of the person I'm sharing with, if you see what I mean. So <laughs> it would create that sort of tunnel vision effect. So anyway, I'm going to uh, leave that one as host camera for now. Um, there is other settings that you can do in interview mode as well in terms of adding sort of white labeling to it. Uh, and so that is done with this little cogwheel over to this side where basically you can change the name of the uh, the title of the page that will appear when you send your interview link. Uh, you can also add some uh, branding in terms of a logo that will appear in the, uh, the web page. And then also you can add an image, which is when you send the link out, this is the image that they will see, uh, for example, in, in, the, in the flow of messages or whatever. A bit like a thumbnail when you send somebody a YouTube video clip or something like that link. Uh, so those are a few of the settings. You can also change whether you default to dark mode on their uh, uh, screen, which you may want to do to stop any glare coming off if they've got a bright white browser. Uh, so you may want to default to dark mode in the browser. Uh, show viewer comments and show viewer count, which is if you are going live, then do you want the uh, the guest to be able to see how many viewers there are and how many comments there are? Uh, and then also allow private chat. So you do have this option to have this sort of two-way chat between you and the uh, the guest as well. So you can enable that there if you want. Turn off audio processing for guests. I'm guessing if you're doing presentations, this isn't necessarily applicable. Uh, but this one basically is if you don't want to activate any of the sort of noise cancellation effects and things like that that are normally active with Ecamm to give you better sound quality, you can check this box here and it will turn them all off. Uh, so you just get completely clean audio of however it's coming out from the other end. So, But I would recommend probably leave that one as it is, uh, as not checked uh, to uh, for, the, for, for most purposes. So then when you've uh, clicked save on that and then you'll normally have a little link here that you can copy. It doesn't show up at the moment because I'm in demo mode, um, but normally you'd just be able to copy that link uh, and then you can send that link out to your guest. So what will the guest see on their side? Well, let's have a look at that, shall we? But before we do, let me just tell you <laughs> exactly what we're talking about here, which is Ecamm Live. And this is the live production environment for uh, Mac OS. And it's what I use to make all my videos for this channel. But I also use it extensively in business as well. It's uh, a really powerful package that enables you to create uh, far more immersive uh, presentations and meetings and things like that and uh, pitches for business uh, than you would all ordinarily be able to do in Zoom alone, for example. So it really does help sort of level up the overall production quality and you can just do it with the touch of a few buttons of the Stream Deck. <laughs> uh, so I highly recommend it. And if you want to get a free trial, then head over to takeonetech.io slash ecamm and get a 14 day free trial where you can try out all of the free features. And I'm sure you'll be hooked like I was when I first tried it. So <laughs> that is what we're using to do this uh, whole thing in. So let's go and have a look now as a guest, what you will see from your side and how how you uh, will need to set up things from your side to make things run a little bit smoother and then how to actually get into the interview and so on. So here we are over at the guest's computer and we've uh, got a little window into uh, what's going on with them. <laughs> and uh, I'll just come on to this, uh, this uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation to begin with uh, because when you play a PowerPoint presentation, normally uh, 
go into slideshow mode, normally you it will take over the whole screen and you'll just see the full screen of the slides. If you've got two monitors, cunningly, it will still take over all of your monitors usually because it will play the slideshow in one and then it'll have the show, no uh, show notes, the speaker notes and things like that in on the other monitor. If you are going to be joining Ecamm as a guest, then you probably want to be seeing the interview uh, the window and the Ecamm login window and things like that as well. Uh, so you perhaps don't want to have your presentation running full screen, although you want, obviously want to play it into the, uh, into the, into the production. So I'd recommend using the uh, PowerPoint in uh, playing in, playing the slideshow in a window and you can do this in PowerPoint and in Keynote. In Keynote it's actually a lot easier because you just go up to the play menu and instead of clicking on play slideshow you just do play slideshow in window. Whereas in PowerPoint which is why I'm demonstrating PowerPoint specifically what you need to do is if you come over to the ribbon uh, and then along the top click on the uh, slideshow uh, and then in the slideshow uh, ribbon menu you can see that this one here that is set up slideshow. So click on that menu item and then you'll see setup show you've got the option as presented by speaker full screen or the next one down is presented by an individual uh, in window so that's the one that we want and now what you can see is if I click OK when I play this slideshow it will magically play in a window and now that this is a free floating window so there we go we've got our presentation now playing in a window so uh, let's just leave that one there we'll just park that obviously even though it's in a window you still can use if you've got like a remote presenter or something like that one of those Logitech clickers then you can uh, you can still use that to activate your slides or advance your slides and so on so it's just that it is playing now in a window okay so I'm going to go over into the browser now and here what we've done is we've followed our link from our uh, host who's uh, sent us the link and so now uh, this is the uh, basically the uh, the place where we actually join the call so it's going to ask you to select a camera and so you just select from the drop down any camera that's available to you on your system uh, and then also you select the microphone and again anyone that is available to you on your system. You'll also get the option here to put in your name so just add your name in there uh, and then there is a link to join and so when you click join what's going to happen is it will just say that it is connecting and then there's a little sound that comes through on the host's machine to let them know that somebody's trying to get through. So let's just come through to the uh, host's uh, side for a moment. Uh, so I'll flick back to this screen and then let's come into demo mode. And what you can see is over on the interview uh, window, uh, over on the right hand side, it's telling me that Robert is trying to join the call. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on the little green button to answer and what happens is it sends them to the green room. If you remember that was one of the options that we checked in the preferences earlier. So there's nobody has been added into our scene just yet but we've got Robert waiting in the green room. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the little assign button. Uh, incidentally if you have um, got scenes set up where you've just got one camera as the full scene uh, then this is where you could just add the person in taking over the full screen or add them onto the left hand side or right hand side if there's two of you. Uh, personally I don't actually use these ones. I always like to create my scenes in advance in the way that we've just done uh, and then actually assign the person to a specific slot and that way you always know exactly where they're going to go and it's just a lot easier to create in my view nicer looking scene layouts. So we're going to assign uh, this person to uh, guest number one if you remember and now if I click on that you'll see that they've magically appeared at the top. Now, often if you are the host and you've got people joining your uh, interview, presumably if you are the host and you're using Ecamm and if you're familiar with it, then you might have quite a good setup and a good camera setup and lighting and things like that. But sometimes, occasionally, I don't want to be presumptuous, but occasionally your guests maybe aren't so prepared in terms of camera position, lighting and things like that. And so you may want to do some tweaks to their uh, picture quality and their positioning and things like that. Well, fortunately, if I come down to the camera effects window, uh, normally this would be just defaulting to your, uh, your own camera. Uh, but what you can also do is you can adjust the uh, picture of any of your guests as well. So let's just come down to guest number one. And then in, it, you'll see as well, it's now changed from guest number one. It's also added their name afterwards. So you can just see exactly who it is uh, based on the name, obviously, that your guest entered on their side. So now we've got uh, guest number one in the camera effects panel. Uh, and we can make a few changes. Uh, so let's just see that, uh, well, the, the sort of picture positioning, the quality is all right, but the picture positioning is not quite the same and matching uh, my 
particular uh, position. So let's come down to the uh, zoom and pan uh, and you just toggle the zoom and pan on and then we could just zoom this one in a little bit just to get things looking a little bit more proportionate uh, and then we can move the uh, the position. I'm just moving the uh, the window you can see here. I can just move around anywhere. So let's get that positioned and we look a little bit more in proportion now and perhaps a little bit more uh, balanced. Uh, obviously the uh, this picture quality is okay but if there was um, you know some issues with uh, you know the uh, uh, either you know too light too dark something like that or the picture in, uh, color correction needed to be picture color needed to be corrected then you could do that with these uh, sliders down here just as you could with the other one but for now that all looks fine so there we go we've got the uh, the person now on the uh, on in the scene uh, but we need to bring their slides in so this is uh, what we'll be doing from the host side let's head back to the guest side for a moment and we'll have a look from their side what needs to be done so here incidentally you can see that the guest in their uh, in their window uh, they are seeing uh, the feed from my camera so that's why they can see my my face in here if you remember I mentioned that you might want to have them seeing the actual output rather than just your camera and in that case this is where that would appear and you can see why that is useful now because at the moment they can see their picture uh, but ideally rather than just seeing my picture they would want to see the full presentation that the full um, uh, output so that they can see what is going out what's live they can see when they're sort of like on stage as it were and when they're not so that's why you would want that to probably be the uh, the actual output from the uh, the production I hope that makes sense <laughs> so what they're going to do now is uh, you'd want to actually share the slides so if we come down to this button here we've got screen share so I'll click on screen share uh, and then you can share either the entire screen or they can share the window so I'm going to click on window and uh, because we are obviously playing our PowerPoint in a window and you can see we've got either the uh, Chrome uh, we've got Ecamm Live is running on their computer <laughs> so uh, yeah and then we've also got the uh, the PowerPoint slide here so I'm going to click on that one and now they are sharing their PowerPoint slides and what you'll see in their window is they've got their camera but then also they have got the um, uh, screen sharing showing down there just as well Incidentally, there is a little button on the screen sharing. If ever they want to stop, they can just click on there to stop screen sharing as well. So now they are actually uh, sharing their screen. Should we head back and see what needs to be done on the other side now? <laughs> uh, so now I am in demo mode again back on the host computer. And what you'll notice is we've now got an extra window has appeared in the interview mode. So what we need to do now is assign that to our guest number two. So I'm going to assign that to guest number two and look at that immediately the slides have just popped up in the uh, in, in the scene itself there. Now you might find that um, you can see we've got a little bit of a browser bar depending on the exact size of their uh, this the the uh, window that they've got on their computer um, so you may need to just crop this a little bit so let's just say I'm going to come into Ecamm and if you hold option and then uh, drag the edge you can actually crop a little bit so perhaps we need to just crop a little bit out of that one so this is why you'd want to get somebody ideally on a call just a little bit a little bit beforehand just to make sure that everything is all set up but now essentially that is looking pretty good isn't it they we've got the uh, the guest we've got the host and then we've also got uh the, the slides and if i just reach over to my guest computer <laughs> and then uh move the slides you'll see that basically it's just coming through as screen sharing exactly as you would expect uh, and so that is basically how you do that one other feature that you might want to just uh, have a quick look at as well if you need to have any back and forth during the uh, the presentations is there is this little chat window uh, down in the uh, oops, moving the wrong mouse there don't want to move my uh, guests mouse <laughs> down in the uh, the bottom corner here we've got this little uh, speech bubble which is basically the guest chat and that pops out this little interview chat and if I just type a message in here like that whoops I can't spell so if I press that it's going to send that message and now if I just come back to the guests uh, computer what you can see is if I move their presentation out of the way again swapping my mouse <laughs> it, you can see that it says hi you're doing great and my message has just come through there and then they can obviously send a message back and forth. Um, so that is how you would do this in uh, Ecamm Live and uh, how you can share your uh, 
allow your guest to do screen sharing and uh, it's, it's a great feature it's really versatile i mean think about it for like i say virtual conferences meetings and things like that it uh, it is a pretty powerful tool that you've got at your disposal there now if you found this useful don't forget to hit that like button and uh, subscribe to the channel uh, and if you found it really useful there's always my buy me a coffee page as well <laughs> that you can find at buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech it's the easiest way to show your support for the channel so that's all for this video, but I will leave a link to some other great videos all about Ecamm Live specifically over on the uh, right hand side in a playlist over at the, uh, the bottom. <laughs> and then at the top will be another great video that uh, YouTube has specially picked just for you. So until the next time, have a great day.